Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now this journey through life is absolutely treacherous and it throws many challenges our way. I know this because I have been on this pilgrimage now for more than 50 years, half a century of hard lived life and along that path I've discovered many habits and changes that I have made to my life, which have allowed me to supercharge my life, to really enjoy this middle phase of life, which you can apply to any stage of your life, whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 70s, or 80s. You can make these changes, which can help supercharge your life too. So, I've got six changes for you. I may even have a bonus at the end if you stay tuned. So, let me tell you how I've supercharged my life. Now the first change I'm gonna recommend that you make to your life to supercharge your life is an easy one. It is to walk as much as possible in your daily routine. Now it doesn't sound that much of a, a stretch to make, does it, to supercharge your life? But walking, I think, is hugely underrated when it comes to staying fit and staying healthy in all different ways of life because if you walk, it gets you outdoors. You're in an environment, whether you're in the city or in the rural parts of the world, where you're in nature. You're seeing the world going on around you at the same time as benefiting your health by staying mobile, staying active and contributing to your daily fitness. Now, being outdoors definitely improves your physical health, but it also contributes considerably to your mental well-being. Because if you're outdoors, particularly if you can get out amongst nature, you'll definitely feel better about the life that you're living, and at the same time, you can stay fit and healthy. Now, remember what I said, walk as much as possible. This does involve a little bit of thinking about the way that we get around the place. If we're catching the bus somewhere, or the train, or we're having a lift or taking a car journey, get off the bus or park your car that little bit further away from your destination so you can undertake that little bit of walking to get your, your activity going. One of the things I do on my mobile phone, I've got a step counter um, downloaded as one of the apps, and I can check then how many steps I've done each day. I set myself a personal goal of walking between eight and 10,000 steps per day. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me interested in keeping my activity going. On Friday, just the other day, I went to a festival in my local town. I live three miles from town. So I made a special point of leaving the house an hour early. I walked into town, went to the festival, and walked home at the end of it. So I ended up walking nearly seven miles just by doing a little bit of forethinking about the journeys that you take and allowing plenty of time, you can walk as much as possible. It's a simple task, but it will make a world of difference. Now, my second habit that you can introduce into your life, which will certainly sort you out health-wise, is, and it's gonna sound strangely specific, but I'm gonna suggest that you eat beetroot every day. Now, I know it sounds odd, and beetroot is not to everybody's taste, because it does taste quite earthy, and it has a, sometimes quite a frightening appearance, being rather purple or red, and of course when you eat lots of it, it passes through the body, and when you look at your excretions, it will obviously look back at you uh, in that red and purple colour, so it can be a little disconcerting when you start eating beetroot. But it has so many health benefits, beetroot should not be overlooked as a natural supplement to your daily routine. Now, why do I say beetroot is really good for you? Well, obviously it's a vegetable, it's good to eat vegetables, but beetroot particularly has a certain characteristic which can be very beneficial to you health-wise because it contains quite a few vitamins, yes it does, but particularly it contains nitrates. Now the nitrates contained within beetroot have a very positive effect on your body. One of the things it does is that if it's eaten in sufficient quantities, it can dilate the veins and arteries. It can help with the blood flow around the body. In fact, the nitrates used within 
um, which were found in within beetroot are actually utilized within that famous blue pill called Viagra, which helps the blood flow to a certain part of the body. Well, beetroot, the nitrates within it, helps that blood flow throughout your body. So much so, in fact, that it can actually reduce the risks of heart attack and stroke if taken in sufficient quantities. Now, there are many um, sort of research papers which have been uh, undertaken which prove that eating beetroot improves physical performance so much so that athletes often ingest beetroot to improve their performance actually on the field of whatever sports they're undertaking it's a known fact that during the um, the london olympics 2012 uh, many of the athletes, because of the research results, you know, were ingesting beetroot in s significant quantities before their events because it increases the blood flow and certainly your cardiovascular system will improve considerably. Now, I know one of the issues with beetroot, or beets as I think they're called in certain parts of the world, is the flavour. But don't forget, it's, you, know, you don't have to eat it raw. You can use beetroot in many different ways. For me, myself, I take a beetroot shot of juice every morning when I have my breakfast. The other way I ingest it is in a smoothie. You get some beetroot, you throw it into a blender with a banana, a little bit of honey, and it actually makes a very tasty and rather sweet uh, smoothie, which you can take before going to the gym. Because then you get the benefits of those nitrates opening up the bloodstream, and if you're doing running or anything like that, it's certainly going to benefit you. Now, the other way you can take your beetroot is in the form of powder. You can add beetroot powder to things like uh, your, your, um, your protein shakes or your smoothies if you're following a healthy diet. If you don't like the taste of it, you can add it in that way. But probably the best way to eat beetroot is in its natural form. So you can either boil it, probably not the best way because you lose some of the nitrates when you boil it, but you can boil it, you can eat it with a salad, or you can, uh, you can roast it and eat it with dinner. But beetroot is absolutely a bit of a wonder food that I have been introducing into my diet over the last couple of years. And I can tell you now, I can see positive benefits. So if you want to supercharge your life, eat a little bit of beetroot every day. And if you want to take the easy route, have a shot of organic beetroot juice with breakfast every day. And I guarantee you will feel better. Now, the next tip I have for you is to read at least 10 pages every day. Now, I've been an avid reader since I was a child. And in fact, I absolutely advocate reading as the best route to continue your self-development and learning as you go through life, because it's something you can do every day, wherever you are. And when I say read 10 pages of every day, obviously the best route to take is to read a book. However, if it's a newspaper, if it's a magazine, or if it's any other avenue that you can seek your reading fix, aim for 10 pages every day. Now, reading has many positive benefits for you as you go through life. It's said to improve your empathy. It's said to improve your social skills. It improves memory. It improves your language skills. And it also improves your ability to control anxiety and depression. Anxiety typically is an inwards facing situation where you tend to focus upon yourself and you know you feel anxious about the world around you. Whereas reading puts your mind elsewhere. It really helps with dealing with some of the lower level mental well-being issues that we often face in life. It can be a real game changer for people who are seeking to learn and improve themselves. Now, any reading is going to be good for you, but actually I make a choice between fiction and non-fiction. I read them alternatively. I read a fiction book, which for me is typically going to be, you know, a, a story, an adventure, something of that nature. And then I read a non-fiction book, which for me is typically a biography or something based in history. But it's down to your own personal taste. Studies suggest that fiction reading is actually really good for the mental well-being, as I said, because it puts you elsewhere in the world, it boosts your imagination, and it allows you to let your mind wander and go on interpretive sort of views of the things that you're reading on the page. Whilst non-fiction 
is actually a learning experience. Now for me, I tend to read at the end of the day when I'm you know, sat in bed waiting to go to sleep. I, I find it helps my mind to slow down and relax. Unless you're reading a really you know, rambunctious fictional book where you're off on an adventure somewhere. But that's the best way that I find. Read at the end of the day. But if your life means that you commute on long journeys every day into work, on the train, on the bus, that might be a great time to do some reading. Now, although I prefer to read a book myself, you know, you've also got Kindles, you can also listen to talking books. If you drive a lot in the car, maybe a talking book is the compromise which you can have in your life to read in a way whilst you're doing something else. But certainly, if you read 10 pages every day, you will boost your self-development and learning in ways which you simply can't achieve in any other method of ingesting information on social media, on the internet, or on the television. Reading is king. Now, my next tip for you to supercharge your life is free of charge. It doesn't cost anything. It just involves a reordering of the way that you go about your life. And I'm gonna suggest that you go to bed one hour earlier. Now, I know what you're thinking, I can't fit in everything in my life and lose an hour of my day. I'm not suggesting that, all right? What I'm suggesting is that we reorder our lives because I'm really conscious. A lot of the things I'm suggesting here are quite time intense, you know, um, reading more, going for a walk. All of these things take time. And for most of us who live busy, busy lives, we're juggling work, uh, we're chug juggling spending time with our partners, our families, our elderly parents, whatever it may be, time is a finite commodity. But there is a way that you can squeeze more out of the time that you currently have just by rethinking the way that you use it. Here's my thinking. This is what I've tried in my life. It's worked for me. Go to bed one hour earlier. Sleep the same amount of time. I'm not suggesting you sleep for an extra hour. So if you normally go to bed at 11 o'clock and rise at six o'clock to go about your day, what I'm suggesting is that you go to bed at 10 o'clock and rise at 5 a.m. So you're still sleeping the same amount of time. But you will find that extra hour that you gain at the beginning of your day will be incredibly beneficial for you. Because if you're like me, the last hour of my waking day is normally spent sat on the sofa watching the television. It's not a particularly productive period of my life. I'm normally just relaxing, watching the TV. Yes, I enjoy doing that, but imagine if that hour was converted to the beginning of my day, where I feel fresh and I feel vibrant and I'm still bursting with energy. I've just got up. I've now got an hour at the beginning of my day that I didn't have before. And I can convert that hour into going to the gym for a workout. I can go for a walk. I can read those 10 pages of a book. I can get my daily job done a little bit earlier when I'm feeling fresh and energized. That is a really positive way of reordering your day to get more out of the same amount of time that you currently have at your disposal. Give it a try for a week. See how it feels. See how much more productive you can be with an hour at the beginning of the day. And it's normally when everybody else is still in bed. So you've got the world to yourself to go for a walk, to go for a run, to read a book, or to do whatever you need to do. One week, give it a trial. See if I'm right. Now my next tip to supercharge your life, and you've heard me saying this before if you've seen other videos involving my life regime, is write it down. Now I've kept a journal for many, many years. I mean, I did it when I was young, I had a gap of not doing it, and then I started again a few years ago. You will find that writing things down in a book has many positive benefits to your life. Just things like keeping you accountable, planning your time, planning some of the things that we've just talked about and keeping track of your performance and your achievements. You will be amazed just how valuable the act of writing something physically down on a piece of paper can keep you accountable for the things that you hope to achieve in life.
Um, my daily journal is really quite straightforward. At the top of the page, I just set out a few things. Um, what I eat, for instance, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and my activity. Because then I keep track of what I'm eating. I keep track of my activity because these things are important to a healthy and active life. The other thing it allows me to do is manage my time much more efficiently. I keep track of my goals for the day. I set them in advance. At the end of the day, I tick them off. It gives me a sense of achievement because I've got to you know, the end of a task which I was seeking to achieve in that time period. And if I haven't achieved it, I move it forward to the next day. So I don't forget important tasks that I'm seeking to do. Now, keeping a life journal, as I describe, it helps with efficiency in your time. It gives you satisfaction when you've achieved those goals and it keeps you accountable. All of these things can be achieved simply by writing things down in a paper. And it costs nothing, does it? It's a cheap notebook, it can cost, what, a pound or a dollar. All you need is a pen, and there you have a life journal in which you can go forward, keep track of your records, your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, your goals, your achievements, your plans for the future. All in one place, all at no financial cost. And along with that, you're improving your writing skills and all of these other things which come with spending time investing in your development. Because when I say to you to supercharge your life, write things down, that's all I'm asking you to do. Invest in your development by writing some things down in a book for five to 10 minutes each day. I'm sure you can find that time to improve your life. Now, my next tip to supercharge your life is have a passion in your life. Now, I'd like you to imagine for a moment that you met me in the street today. It's possible. I walk around the streets. And if I met you and I said to you, what is your passion in life? How would you answer? And I would put a caveat on it as well. You cannot say your job, your family, or your children. I want you to be able to tell me what your passion is. Because you know what? I have met many people in life who haven't been able to answer that. They tell me they don't have a passion. And having a passion is a really important part of the human journey through life. Because if you don't have a passion, what motivates you? What inspires you? What helps you get through the darker periods in your life? Like when you're on the middle of a crappy night shift at work, what keeps you going? to get through to the end of the day or to get through to the weekend? What's that light at the end of the tunnel for you? And that light is passion. We need a passion. If you don't have a passion at the moment, I suggest to you that you need to think about it. You need a passion. It can be anything. It can be fishing. It can be reading. It can be philatony. It can be any number of hobbies or activities or things that you enjoy doing, which bring a genuine joy to your life and a smile to your face. Because you need a passion to get through those moments of darkness where you need to lock on to something to look forward to, to get through to the end of the day. Now, there's a German philosopher called George Heigl who once said, nothing great in the world has ever been accomplished without passion. And I would suggest that is something which you need to cultivate in your life if you can't answer my question. What is your passion? If you have to think really hard about it, you probably don't have a passion. You've got a hole in your life that you need to fill. So think about the question, Think about your answer and think about how you're going to correct it if you don't have a passion. Now, that was my six tips to supercharge your life. But I did promise you a bonus one, and I'm good for my word. So my final tip for you is to help somebody selflessly. It might sound a strange thing to do to improve your life if you help somebody else. But I can tell you, if you take the time to step outside your normal parameters of life to help another person for no other reason 
then because you can, will pay you back dividends enormously. Because not only does it make you feel better, make you feel valuable and your life worth something, but the person that you're helping feels boosted, energized and inspired to go forth and continue doing great things or maybe motivate them to go on to greater uh, you know, achievements in the future too. Now I'm not saying you've got to join a charity and you know, go and work in a soup kitchen for six months. Of course that's great, but there are small ways that you can selflessly help other people too, which will boost your life. Now for me, I'll tell you, my time is pretty busy at the moment. I do actually work for a number of charities and I volunteer for charities as well. I'm not looking for praise for that. It's something, a path I've chosen for many years and it's worked out rather well for me in the way that it's paid me back. But one of the simple ways which I help other people, which cost nothing, is I'm really grateful when people do things for me which I, uh, I'm not expecting. So for instance, if I go into a shop and, and a staff member is very, very good at the way they help me or very polite and very courteous and they make my customer journey a very positive one, I will take the time to seek out their manager and tell them how much I've appreciated the service I've received from that individual. Or I might send an email to the company and say, I was a customer of yours today. You know, the person who helped me was incredibly supportive and a great ambassador for your company. It cost me nothing. It takes but a few moments. It's a paragraph on an email. But I know its consequences to the person who receives that praise is enormous. And it's just a little way I have of feeling perhaps I feel smug because I've been able to help somebody's life, give them a little leg up, make them feel good about themselves. But it works for me too, because I feel I've enjoyed that experience. Little tip for you, to supercharge your life, help somebody supercharge theirs. And you will find it works absolutely out for you as well too. So there we go. Those were my six tips to supercharge your life with a little bonus at the end. I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know if I've hit the routes that you've taken in your life which have been beneficial for you. If I've missed any, drop them into the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, click the subscribe. Um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or become a patron. My patrons get additional special content which I provide only for them and you will find the link to my patron pages in the show notes below. So, until the next time, supercharge your life. Pick one of the suggestions I've made today and give it a try. See if it makes a difference. I hope it does. And I will see you again very soon.